Chess is the flavor of Chennai right now, and why not? Chennai is an international center for chess. In India, it is undeniably the capital of chess. World Chess Day just happened a couple of days ago, and the Chess Olympiad is going to begin a short while from now. On this occasion, let us take a look at what makes Chennai so special for chess. Let's not forget that chess was an Indian game after all. It began here, went abroad, changed form several times and finally came back to India. In ancient times, chess was known as Chaturanga. And from the 6th century, we have Sanskrit works where we have references to kings playing the Chaturanga. Whether they played it in the form that we know of today, we don't know. There certainly must have been changes. But the word Chaturanga is said to denote the four components of a traditional Indian army. And what are those four components? The foot brigade, the cavalry, the chariots, and finally the elephants. These are the four components that make the Chatura Anga, the four parts to an army. After all, the chessboard is a battlefield and two armies are fighting against each other for supremacy. From here, as I said earlier, the game went and came back with several changes. Several of you may have seen the Satyajitre classic Shatranj Ke Khiladi set in 19th century Lucknow, based on Munshi Premchand's short story of the same name. And in it, there is a scene where a Munshi comes in to see the two Nawabs playing chess. And he gives a brief account of how chess has changed between the Indian version and the British version. So the Indians, the queen was known as the Wazir, Wazir, the minister, whereas in England, she was the Malika or queen. The bishop in India was replaced by the chariot. The horse remained the cavalry and the rook was the elephant. It's a name by which it is very commonly known even today in India. And so these constituted the changes. The pawn which stood in front could move only one step even in the beginning in Indian chess. These were some of the variants that we know of from that film. When the English came here, they found that the Indians took a great liking to their version of chess. And from the records, we are able to see that the British, in order to teach the Indians chess, would sometimes even give them a handicap by playing without their rooks, so that the Indians would have an advantage. But Indians learnt very quickly. In 1829, Hulam Qasim of Madras, along with James Cochrane of the East India Company, played a chess tournament against a team in Hyderabad. They would make a move and then write a letter to Hyderabad indicating what move they had made. Then the Hyderabad team would make a move and the letter would come back and so on. The match went on for several months. Eventually, Hulam Qasim won. The English acknowledged that as far as their version of chess was concerned, he was probably the first Indian expert. In the 1840s, we read of Venkat Agar, a Brahmin of Tanjavur, who could play and win against Englishmen in that town. And therefore, we know gradually, Indians were learning the British version and becoming masters at it. In the 1930s, there was a Ramani press in South Mada Street in Mailapur, run by Subramanya Iyer. The building was known as Solar House. And later, Subramanya Iyer, for all his charities, would win the title of Dharma Kesari. It was said that his house was open to chess players. Anybody could come in and there would be simultaneously games going on. And that is how people learned. Several households boasted of chess players. Like Solar Subramanya Iyer, in Madurai, there was a Mapille Vinayagar soda factory where again the chess matches would go on all the time. And gradually, all across Tamil Nadu, or what we would later come to call Tamil Nadu, people were playing chess in increasing numbers. In 1947, in the month of April, the Madras Chess Club was established and later that would morph into the Tamil Nadu Chess Association. 
From the 1950s, the Chennapuri Andhra Mahasabha, which was a social organization that functioned from the Victoria Public Hall, used to conduct chess tournaments and prizes used to be won there. Yet another organization that played a very important role in propagating chess was the Young Men's Christian Association. It came to the city in the 1890s to promote temperance, but it soon became a center for sport. And by the 1950s, it was a great center for chess. But if there was one man who made chess popular in this area, it was Manuel Aron. Aron was born in Burma, and while young, he would see his parents playing chess. In 1942, during the Second World War, the family migrated and came and settled in Madras. And thereafter, Aron began to gradually play the game. Post-independence, India became very close to the Soviet Union. And the Soviet Union was one of the great centers of chess. Practically every city in that vast union of countries was a chess center. And the Soviets did their level best to propagate chess. They published books in Russian on chess. And soon all those books came to be available over here. Aaron learned chess, began to play competitively, and soon became India's biggest name in the world of chess. By the 1960s, he had become India's first international master. The Soviets encouraged this by sending their players over to India to play against Aaron. He too played in the correspondence method, just like Ulam Qasim and James Cochrane. And gradually, chess became increasingly popular. In 1972, at the Soviet Cultural Association on Kasturi Rangayengar Road in Alvarpet, the Mikhail Tal Chess Club was instituted with Soviet help. And Aaron became a fixture there. Coming there would be a young boy whom we today recognize as Vishwanathan Anand, India's first chess grandmaster. And let us see what Anand has to say about that in his biography, Mind Master. My mother belonged to a family of lawyers who played chess at home and she picked up the sport early. Much like the youngest child in almost any household, I was eager to participate in all the activities that my older siblings engaged in. She had introduced chess to my brother, older than me by 13 years, and my sister, 11 years my senior, and I moved my first piece when I was six. My mother was as good at the game as one could get playing at home without formal training. One day, my sister happened to spot a signboard that read Chess Club outside a building on her way back home from college. On investigating, it turned out to be the Mikhail Tal Chess Club, named after the former Soviet great, housed at the Soviet Cultural Center in the leafy, upscale central Madras neighborhood of Alvarpet. So Vishwanathan Anand joined the Mikhail Tal Chess Club, came under the influence of Manuel Aran, and in 1988 became India's first international grandmaster. Thereafter, there was no looking back. When Anand had put Chennai on the world map of chess, everybody aspired to become an Anand. And thereafter, we have had Pragyananda, who at the age of 10 became the world's youngest international master, and then at the age of 12, became the second youngest international grandmaster. Thereafter, Tamil Nadu and Chennai have been at the forefront of chess. Let us look at some of the great names. First of all, out of the 74 or 73 grandmasters that we have in chess in India, 24 come from Tamil Nadu. Seven women grandmasters come from here. 34 international masters. 13 international women masters. And then we have names like Gukesh, P. Inian, Bharat Subramanyam, Arjun Kalyan, so many other names. Every day there is a new champion born in this state and in this city. On the one hand, we have had institutions. On the other hand, we have had private donors and philanthropists like Dharma Kesari Solar Subramanyaya and also N. Mahalingam of Shakti Sugars who did his level best to promote this sport. 
all of this contributed in a big way to the popularity of the game. But there is no denying that there are names, marquee names like Manuel Aran, Vishwanathan Anand, Pragyananda, Gukesh and so on that really put Chennai on the world map. Let us celebrate the Chennai Olympiad and pray for its success. And let us hope that Chennai remains at the forefront of chess for all time to come. See you next week. Bye for now. Thank you.